Okay. Um, so this concludes what I have to say about the transport layer. So we got five minutes left. Um, let us quickly do a preview of what we're going to talk about next time. That's right. <laughs> next time on mobile communication. <laughs> Um, okay, we're going to talk about applications, as I said. Specifically, we're going to talk about cellular telephony and data services. So, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure we've alluded to some of these concepts before, but I'd like to make sure we're all on the same page. So we call a cellular telephone network uh, by that name because space is divided into cells. In particular, if you look at a map of a cellular uh, coverage area, cells will usually be represented in this way, by a, sequ a sequence of hexagons. Anybody know why hexagons? So they have uh, hexagons, they're sort of round, okay that's a good one. Uh, hexagons have a special property, um, geometric property. And you can you can cover a plane. You can cover a plane with nothing but hexagons. So there are only uh, three regular polygons that you can do that with: triangles, squares, and hexagons. Hexagons are the one with the largest number of sides, so they're the closest to circles. So basically, what happens is the center of each of these cells is a base station. That base station has a certain radio range. So if you're within one of these hexagons, that's a pretty good approximation to being within radio range of a particular base station. Does anybody know why uh, dividing space like this is a really compelling idea? So in other words, why would we not do the following? Uh, let's have one base station in the entire city of Toronto and just walk it on the CN Tower. Okay, weak, that's, uh, that, I mean, uh, so, about 10 years ago, they had these things called Iridium handsets, and they were about the size of a, a larger cell phone, and they could reach into space, so weakness is not sufficient argument. Uh, Single pipe failure, no. What's, what'd you say? Bandwidth. Bandwidth, who said bandwidth? Bingo. So, um, what you can do is you can divide up, if you have, let's say, 40 megahertz, you can divide it up so that you can put 10 megahertz here, 10 megahertz here, 10 megahertz here, 10 megahertz here. What you can also do is continue that. So in other words, if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, the first 10 megahertz, the second 10 megahertz, third 10 megahertz, fourth 10 megahertz, you can continue that pattern, 1, 2, uh, or the uh, cells using the first 10 megahertz will be sufficiently far apart that they won't interfere with each other. Similarly, the fours, the threes, and the two, and so on. So it's it's all about spatial reuse of frequency. If I put an antenna on the CN tower, then the entire city of Toronto can only use the same 40 megahertz. Whereas here, I can partition space into all of these to basically these, this pattern, this set of patterns, that's this group of four uh, 
uh, cells, and I can reuse that as many times as I want. And in particular, if there's a certain, there, there's no natural size to these, so if there's a certain area where I need lots and lots and lots more uh, coverage, I can shrink this down as much as I like. And in fact, I can even subdivide these cells into subcells and thereby increase the number of subscribers that I can support. So that's the compelling idea of cellular. It's, it's all about spectral reuse. It's all about not, uh, uh, it's all about uh, being able to add subscribers uh, uh, as many as you want in as, as dense an area as you want. Okay, that's enough for today.